Wall Street is profiting off the Ukraine war by investing in Russian oil stocks while individual investors in the United States have been banned from investing in Russian stocks. Wall Street has been profiting as Russian oil companies corner the energy market. BlackRock fund advisors bought $1.6 billion worth of Russian stocks over the past year. State Street also bought $113 million worth of Russian stocks. JP Morgan bought $10 million worth of Russian stocks. The list goes on and on. While hundreds and thousands of people die in this war, Wall Street is profiting and continues to stand with Ukraine publicly, which any logical person would call hypocritical, to put it nicely. You may remember in April of 2022, the U.S. issued an executive order to prohibit new investment in the Russian Federation. That was the title of the executive order. Despite the executive order from Q2, when restrictions were put in place to Q3, U.S. investment firms increased exposure to Russian companies by $10 billion. So despite the U.S. issuing a executive order, U.S. investment firms increased exposure drastically. You may be thinking, how is this possible? This buying is actually permitted according to the executive order. As the executive order states, if Russian investment within a particular fund isn't the majority of the fund's holdings, then the investment isn't considered a new investment. So basically, if the, if the investment in Russia is below 50% of the fund's total investments, it's not considered a new investment. So if BlackRock put, puts 49% of a fund's assets in Russian oil stocks and 51% of the fund's assets are in U.S. stocks, it's not considered a new investment. This caveat within the executive order allows for limitless investment in, into Russia as there is no limit on the amount of funds that can be created and therefore no limit on the amount of investable capital available to Russian companies. For example, if I'm BlackRock or any other large investment manager, I can create 10 or 20 funds even, all putting new money into Russian stocks and it wouldn't be considered a quote-unquote new investment. For context, BlackRock has 517 equity funds and 360 fixed income funds, making it very easy to put money into Russian equities and pretty much seemingly go unnoticed. This buying is taking place as in Q4 of 2022, seven investment firms bought shares of Russian oil companies. That was U.S. investment firms. They bought Luke Oil, Gazprom, and others, which is in stark contrast to how Russian investment firms have treated U.S. companies post-war. So in Q4, Russian firms sold out entirely of their U.S. stocks, which was worth about $170 million, according to public 13F disclosures. I had wrote basically a report laying all this out in Q1 based on Q4 13F disclosures. I wrote this article when I was working at S&P Global as a research analyst. If you would like to read that full article, I have linked it below in the description. S&P Global, you may have heard of from the S&P 500. They have arguably the most data in regard to the stock market. Their massive amount of reliable data allowed me to write this article and the backing of this Fortune 500 company can give you assurance that this data is valid and accurate. I have the full list of Wall Street firms that are buying Russian stocks in the description of this video. Um, so for this video, I focused on the top 50 asset managers. The data that is linked below is from Q3 of 2022, and the data referenced in the linked article below is from Q4 of 2022. Therefore, the data is about a quarter stale, but I would bet my life that these firms are still buying Russian stocks. As I had stated in this article with the backing of S&P Global, seven U.S. firms bought Russian stocks in Q4 of 2022. I would love to give you up-to-date information on the Wall Street buying of Russian stocks, but it's very, very hard to track. The Russian stocks have been delisted from U.S. markets, 
but those stocks still trade on the Moscow exchanges, which makes it very hard to track Wall Street's buying. It's out there and technically publicly accessible information, but it's very hard to find um, this information. For example, popular retail investor site Fintel does not have this information and doesn't want to acquire this information. Quite frankly, when I reached out to Fintel, asking them to list the buying of Russian stocks on the Moscow exchanges, they responded to me like I was, you know, kind of asking f for the a mountain to to be moved, pretty much. Um, so, if you have any data sources that are showing or ownership information for Moscow listed stocks, please share with me and I'll do an updated video for this past quarter. So in conclusion, Wall Street is buying Russian stocks while virtue signaling on social media in support of Ukraine. Here are a couple examples. So let's start with BlackRock. Their CEO Larry Fink said in a LinkedIn post written once the war had started on February 28th of 2022, he said they suspended the purchase of all Russian securities, but ownership data says otherwise. To give a very specific and verifiable example, from Q2 of 2022 to Q3 of 2022, BlackRock bought $10 million worth of Russian mining stock Servalsta, um, ticker CHM. F. The position was updated in S&P Global System in early 2023. You can check this information out for yourself in the ownership tab in the column HL row 10 in the sheets document that I linked below, which is simply the raw ownership data of Russian stocks. Let's take a look at the third largest asset manager, State Street. Unlike BlackRock CEO Larry Fink, State Street CEO Ronald O'Hanley made no promises or comments on the company's investments in Russia, but he did state he was watching the events unfold with quote-unquote great horror and disbelief. I guess he wasn't too horrified though as he did not let the tragedy go to waste as State Street bought over $100 million in Russian stocks year over year. I've picked on BlackRock a lot, but it's way more than just BlackRock and even State Street. In fact, the list is, uh, that I had provided only shows 50 or so investment firms, meaning the total buying is being understated by this study. Also, it's worth noting that if you're an asset manager with under $100 million in assets under management, you don't even have to report your holdings. So the buying is greatly being understated. There are some firms in the market, though, who actually didn't buy the dip in Russian stocks, as thousands of people were killed from the war, obviously. For example, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway didn't buy a share of Russian stocks once the war started. Neither did the largest asset manager in the world, Vanguard. Capital International, Bank of America, and UBS all stayed away from Russian markets despite technically being legally allowed to take advantage of this war. Also, Fidelity sold $9 million of Russian stocks once the war started, and Charles Schwab sold $678 million worth of stocks in reaction to this war. As much as I am making this video to call out the hypocrisy of Wall Street, I want to give praise to those companies who didn't use this loophole to profit off the war. There are still good guys on Wall Street, believe it or not, even though they are greatly outnumbered these days. There are some potential errors in this data that I provided as well. Anytime you pull positions for hundreds of stocks for 50 plus firms, there are going to be some issues. It is possible some firms could transfer shares of Russian stocks between funds, which would pull in as buying. But let's be frank, if 90% of this data was wrong, which it, it is not, the fact that U.S. investment firms are buying Russian stocks would still be valid and proven. It's simply undeniable that Wall Street firms are buying Russian stocks. As I had stated, seven different Wall Street firms bought Russian oil stocks in Q4 of 2022. 
I couldn't name guilty companies in the article I had written with S&P Global because many of those guilty companies were our clients at the time. But in this video, obviously, I took the gloves off and let it rip on those companies. There's an old saying, though. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Wall Street firms buying Russian oil stocks is wrong on all levels, but at the end of the day, it's legal. The true responsibility is with the U.S. government, as they issued an executive order with a loophole that allowed for limitless investment in Russian stocks. I hope you found this video insightful. Mainly on this channel, I post about stocks that I'm going to be looking at or investing in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start investing my time, my effort into making videos more like this one. So make sure you subscribe, like, and share this video with your friends. I also did a study on U.S. investment in China while at my prior job. If you would like to hear that breakdown, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching.